Hey guys, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called The Thing by USAopoly. It is Infection at Outpost 31, and the game plays two to eight players. It takes about an hour to an hour and a half to play, and it is basically the game that is supposed to be attached to the movie of The Thing, John Carpenter's The Thing from the late 80s. In the game The Thing, you're going to be playing as one of many of the different characters in the movie, and your objective is to try and survive the outpost. You need to make it so that you're going to end up on the helicopter at the end of the game. But there's a catch. One or maybe even two or three among you are the thing. The thing is a uh, crazy autonomous like life form that's kind of alien as well. It attaches itself to other players and becomes them. So now they know that they're no longer human. However, you don't. In the game, they're trying to sabotage the space station, kill your allies, as well as trying to join the helicopter at the very end of the game. If a, if a helicopter uh, has at least one thing on it, as you're escaping, you lose, so you have to be very careful of that. Not only that, but if the entire outpost is destroyed before the helicopter comes, you will freeze to death and die. In the game, no one is safe and no one knows who anybody is. Let's go ahead and check it out. So here we have the game, The Thing, Infection at Outpost 31. As you can see, you get quite a bit in the game. There's going to be a game board which will show the outpost and all the locations in the outpost. The first player marker is a revolver. You're also going to be getting a plethora of miniatures, The Thing miniatures, as well as the three different types of characters you can choose in the game. Maintenance characters, these guys over here are like captains, ops characters, and then scientists over here. There's a big supply deck you'll be using in which you're going to be taking part in missions and putting them into a mission stack. It's similar to Battlestar Galactica and all that kind of stuff, uh, Dead of Winter, in which you're going to be flipping over cards to see what happens and whether or not things get uh, a little more scarce than you want them to be or whether things get destroyed and whatnot. Over here is the board in which you're going to be determining whether or not things are, missions are failing, as well as whether or not rooms are getting destroyed. And finally, the levels of the different aspects of the game. There is the four different room destroyed things. If these go over here, the game is over. As well as over here, if the seven missions have failed, the game is over. These are blood tests, and throughout the game, you're going to only get a certain amount of blood tests at the end, based on how well you did to prevent rooms from getting destroyed, as well as prevent the uh, different uh, missions from failing. Sometimes you won't even have a choice in that matter. Over here is the sectors, in which you're going to have to find certain things, like the thing, and rope, dynamite, and even a flamethrower at the very end. You have to destroy the thing as you're going throughout the game, so there is going to be things you're going to be fighting. Over here is the success, failure, and turn order cards. This kind of gives you a reference as to what you're doing throughout the game. Over here is the rule book of the game, as well as it comes with a nice little pamphlet that will show you the little dog that was started off at the very beginning as the thing and has now corrupted the entire crew. You've got blood sample cards to determine whether you're going to be human or whether you're going to be an imitation of a human. Mission log cards, you're going to be taking part in a three-player game or a four-player or even a five-player game. You put them all together here. There's also additional mission logs that are going to increase the number of player count. You're going to also be getting these little things which you're going to put down in the rooms and flip them over after successfully completing the mission and either fighting a thing or gaining an item. When you gain an item, there's actually going to be item cards like these rope uh, cards over here and you can use them to uh, tie up players. You're going to get flamethrowers as well and there's dynamite. The plethora of different items you're going to be getting throughout the game. Sometimes the rooms are going to have a power outage as well as maybe the room will become destroyed. When that happens you'll be moving boards around there. Quite a uh, nice little aspect in the game. You're also going to get smoke tokens, and where there's smoke, there can be fire, and that can destroy a room as well. Finally, you're going to be getting character cards here, and this is going to show you what the character does, if it has any abilities, as well as a little quote from him from the movie, and the supply cards that he will be uh, using throughout the game, which will affect the missions in different ways. Uh, finally, you have a little supply discard, and this little thing here is a little computer term term terminal, that which is going to uh, basically determine whether or not you're failing the missions or not. Overall though, that's what you're getting in the game, along with the Thing box and a nice little array of uh, packaging to set up everything and put it all together nicely in the game, The Thing. Let's talk about a couple turns. So to begin the game, The Thing, you're going to choose a player. Just pick one of these guys here, along with drawing five cards from the supply deck. And the supply deck's going to come up with different things like flashlights and fire extinguishers and petri dishes and Molotov cocktails. All these good things are going to involve giving you additional dice for certain missions, as well as potentially even an ability. Sometimes you can even use them prior to a mission. If you're picked to, to uh, go on one, you can go to a different location and put out some of the fires that could destroy rooms. Uh, as well as, once you've gone ahead and 
and got on your characters and your cards and your board, then you're going to basically draw a mission card here, and uh, depending on the number of players, we'll determine what kind of missions there are in the game. And then uh, the player that starts as the leader, whoever's the leader, will then choose characters. And it's going to be based on the card. So in this instance, it's a four to five player game. You need to have at least one yellow and one green character go on this mission. And that tells you, we, we uh, reveal all dice, roll dice equal to their total uh, plus die value. If you get 22, you pass. 22 or more, you pass. But you also have to choose additional players here, up to five, including yourself. You always have to have yourself go on the mission. Why the heck wouldn't you anyway, right? And then after that, you're going to determine whether you succeed or whether you fail. If you succeed, you get an item and you do whatever it says. If you fail, then you're going to have to move the tracker up and bad things will happen. And rinse and repeat. You're trying to accomplish goals in each of the different parts of the facility. If you accomplish all of that, you're going to get to the helicopter. And then you're going to have to select certain players to go on the helicopter with you as a leader. And if one thing gets on with you, you're in trouble and you're dead. But if you can escape with no thing characters uh, with you, or if you burn them all, well done, you've done a great job. There's also certain parts of the game where you're going to uh, be drawing additional blood samples and potentially turning into the thing yourself if you were a human. So you have to be aware of that as well. That is the basic idea of the game. It's similar to games that have the trader-based aspect, but it has a little bit with this facility in which you're going to be going around from different parts of the game. Let me show you how basically a mission is going to go, as well as showing you the board and how it's all set up. So we're back to the game, The Thing, and as you can see, I've set the board up. These aren't really needed, I'm just leaving them here. This is all the characters, their blood samples they're gonna start with. They could either be a secretly an imitation, which is The Thing, or they can just be a simple human. As the game goes on, the different sectors are gonna open up and assimilation's going to occur, in which you're going to then give people blood samples from the deck here in a specific way, and they have a chance of from becoming human to becoming an imitation yet again, or I mean, instead of a human, becoming an imitation, or they might just still be a human, and if a thing gets an imitation, or sorry, if a thing gets a human, then it's going to stay an imitation, going to stay the thing. You're never going to turn from the thing to a good guy. It's always good guy to bad guy. Um, so th they have these secret. These are hidden, basically, just like any other trader-based game. You've got your characters here that are all going to start on the board, and they're going to go into the rec room. That's where you're going to start. There's sections of the board. This one, this one, and this one. As you can see, there's one, two, and three. And everybody's going to get five cards in their supply. And they're going to be able to look at these cards and put them in their hand, and no one else can get to see them. These guys, this guy has an axe, a flashlight, flamethrower, or a fire extinguisher, flashlight, and a copper wire. Tells you the dice that you might be using for it, as well as abilities. A flashlight can go into an unpowered room, and the, the fire extinguisher can get rid of smoke and or fire. So these are pretty useful, depending on the situation. You're going to choose a captain at random. If there's any way, there's might be in the book, it'll tell you how to do it. But we're just going to start with McCready, because everybody loves Mr. McCready. And we're going to give him a mission card to begin the game with. The mission cards will tell you based on the number of players you're going to be playing with, and that could be up to eight players, and it tells you there's a whole plethora of different things that are going to occur throughout this whole thing. But nevertheless, we're going to start with the uh, three players, because it's easier to do in a four player, we're just having like a little four player game here. And it tells you, you need at least one blue player to go with you. So McCready is going to have to choose Windows here. He has no choice but to choose him on the mission. So he's going to choose himself and he's going to have to choose Windows, and then he gets to pick one other person, which is between these two people here. He doesn't know who's good or bad, however, so it's trying to be an up, 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 in the, up, up, up for grabs right now. So he'll just go ahead and choose Bennings, because why not? After he's chosen these guys here, then he's going to attempt to go onto a mission, and he's going to get to choose a room, any of these locations here. And he's going to pick, let's see here, he'll just go ahead and pick this storage room here. And he's going to have to read this thing here. It says, shuffle and reveal a random card. If it's a copper wire, you pass. And so in this instance here, he'd be like, maybe he'd want to ask who has a copper wire. So instead of picking Bennings, maybe he says, Palmer says he has it. Now, because both of these guys are good, they're going to look in their hand and see if they have one. Let's see if I got it right. Here's a copper wire in Palmer's hand. And let's see about Bennings' hand. Benning has sabotage. No, he doesn't have a copper wire. So in this case, Palmer's probably, you know, he's a good guy. So he's going to tell them he's got the copper wire. And Bennings does not, so he'd probably tell him as well. However, if it was Windows, Windows might lie and say he had one if he didn't have one. However, he does, and he's the thing. But he's definitely not going to put it in there, right? He's going to be like, oh, I'm sorry, guys. I don't have a copper wire, but you still have to put me on the team. That's where the little craziness goes into it. So they're going to go on the mission, and each player is going to give the captain a card. Uh, this is going to be face down. So maybe uh, Windows will give him something that is useful, but not for this mission, like an axe. And then McCready is going to look and see if he has a copper wire, which he doesn't. But he's got a bunch of sabotages, which are nasty. These are bad things that can happen for the captain. So he is a good guy. He doesn't want to play it on himself, so he'll put a fire extinguisher. And then, of course, you have Palmer here, who actually does have a copper wire, and he's going to put that in. But it's going to be face down, and the captain's going to take it, and he's going to shuffle these guys around. And then he's going to reveal them. 
And if, oh, sorry, not reveal them. Uh, if, let's just say, just or take a random card. So he's going to pick a random card of these three. And if it's a copper wire, oh, it wasn't, he would pass. If not, he's going to fail, and these guys would go back here. This thing would move up to here. The current room that he was in would turn, go into smoke. So as you see, the different, um, basically the different locations here from when you when you fail, some bad stuff can happen. Smoke, after the end of a turn, will turn into fire, and fire at the end of a turn will make the room uh, explode and basically be destroyed. This would go on here, indicating a room has been destroyed. If three more get destroyed, the game's over. Also, if they manage to fail any more missions after se after, after six, at seven, they're going to lose the game as well. However, if he would have succeeded by randomly drawing a copper wire, he would have flipped this over and then done whatever it said. He, right now, they're looking for one thing and the rope. If they find the rope and the thing, they'll be able to move on to the next sector. And then if they find the thing two and dynamite, they move on to this. And then thing three, thing three, and a flamethrower, in which case they're going to go on to the helicopter. So now after all that is said and done, these cards will go into the uh, discard supply area and all the players that went on the mission are going to get to draw a card. Everybody who did not go on the mission is going to be able to discard a card from their hand of their choice and he'll just he'll discard a sabotage because he's a good guy and he's going to then draw a new card up and put into his hand. If they would have successfully done this, this is a discard action. It would allow every other player that was on the mission to discard a card from their hand as well and draw an additional card. If the mission would get successfully completed, this gets removed. However, if it's not get successfully completed, then this stays face down and you have no idea what happened. The, then the uh, captain token here would pass to the next player in clockwise order, and you would continue that way. Like I said before, after sector one, there's assimilation, which makes people be possibly become the thing again. And finally, last assimilation, and then there's the escape action. There is a couple of additional things here, like so for instance, sometimes the room will have a power outage, which shows right here, or destroys the room. You're gonna put these on the different rooms. If this gets a power outage, you put this like this, or if the room gets destroyed, you get like that. But all the tokens and stuff like that have the back and front. Not only that, but sometimes you're going to collect the different items in the game and you get, you get a flamethrower or you're going to get a rope that can tie people up and all that good stuff. Dynamite you can use. The captain's going to get these and it's going to pass along from captain to captain. You can use the flamethrower to kill people. You can use the rope to tie people up and you can use dynamite to increase or minus a die pip. So if you roll a die, I got a one, I could then increase it to two. If I had rolled a three, I could have increased it to either a four or reduced it to two. And depending on the different missions is depending on what you're going to want to do. Not only that, but you'll be able to fight the thing. Whenever the thing pops up randomly, if I can find it, there's one, he'll pop up. And the uh, objective will tell you how you need to beat him basically. And it'll show you over here, levels one, two, and three. A level two thing means you need two rolls to get a three of a kind. And it's gonna be based on the amount of cards that you're given after a mission has been completed. So somebody's gonna try and give you bonus cards and whatnot. Basically really, really, really simple. So if everybody had given the captain a flashlight, he would get three dice and he would need to make two rolls to get a three of a kind. So here we go. Do I get a three of a kind? Oh, there you go. There's a three of a kind right there. Three twos. That's only one roll. Had I rolled this though, I would have had another chance to roll this to get a two. But then the thing would die. So that, that's, that, that's awesome. Anyway, that's the basic idea of the game. Get to the helicopter at the end, and then you're going to need to have the captain choose different people to go into the helicopter or not, and um, escape. If the thing is on the, on the board and gets out, he wins. And as well as if he destroys this or destroys the rooms, he wins. The good guys only win if they escape without a thing on board. All right, let's talk about the game. All right, so a couple caveats. Now, the first thing is, well, what if I know this guy's a bad guy and I don't want to put him on, but the card makes me? Well, you're going to be able to get rope and you can tie that person up with the captain's permission and that person won't be able to go on it. However, there's another rule I didn't mention and that's me. it means whenever you tie somebody up that you're supposed to be going on a mission with, the captain won't be able to discard a card after looking at the cards from the mission. And what I mean by that is if the captain were to get three cards uh, from one from each different player in a three player mission, he's going to look at the cards first, which I didn't really explain. He'll look at the cards. If he finds a sabotage, he will do the, whatever the sabotage is and then it'll get discarded. And then he's going to do whatever. He's going to shuffle them up and either draw a card or uh, fight a thing. It just depends. But yeah, so he's going to be able to see that and be able, he can choose to discard a card as well after uh, having to basically force his sabotage, and then he's going to draw a new card from the deck if he wants. The captain has a little option to do so. But that's the basic idea anyway. There are some other aspects of the game too, where at the end of the game, the captain doesn't necessarily choose who's going to go on the helicopter. What the captain does is he chooses another person to be captain, and then the net captain chooses the people to go onto the helicopter, which is you know, basically the same thing as far as explaining goes. But nevertheless, that's how you play the game, the thing. All right, so let me tell you what I think about it. 
All right, so what do I think of this game? The Thing, Infection at Outpost 31. Well, first of all, I love the theme. The theme's awesome. I am a ecstatic about the uh, movie. I love John Carpenter's The Thing. I think it's one of the best horror movies ever made, even still to this date. And I also think that the style and story are amazing. All the actors are great. This game brings that theme to life, and it does it so well. I mean, I feel like I'm playing the game with all the characters. Everybody is included in the game. All the different characters and miniatures and whatnot. Um, I love the miniatures and all that kind of stuff. The only thing is, uh, harder to tell which miniatures are whose, based on the fact that they're just like yellow, green, and blue. And so you can get mixed up a little bit, but they are different enough to know whose is which whenever you're looking at it. So it's pretty simple. It feels like a basic trader game as far as how, it's wor how it works. However, what's interesting as well is the imitation can uh, assimilate during each of the different phases and somebody new can become a thing or nobody can become a thing. It's just depending because sometimes the thing will get an the imitation will get another imitation card, choose one of them and put it back. So you never know how many monsters or bad guys are going to be in the game. You're also going to be going through different portions of the facility and you'll be forced to move from one section to the other, having to fight the monsters, which is cool too. It has that dead of winter feel to me but it also has that resistance feel to me as well. What makes it really, really fun for me though, specifically, is the fact that you never know what's going on. And you really can't trust anybody because the thing can hide throughout the entire game to the very end. But the problem is, if they do that, and they do not destroy the buildings and whatnot, they're not gonna be able, they, 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 they might get blood tested because you need to destroy buildings and, and different locations as you're the thing. And if you can do that, it's going to limit the amount of blood tests at the end of the game, making it more likely for you or another one of your imitation buddies to get on that helicopter and infect the rest of humanity. So you want to kind of do enough damage just to stop what's going on and then potentially even get on that helicopter. If you think you're gonna win by destroying locations or by, uh, failing missions, that's another option as well. But really, I think the sweet spot is doing just enough damage and just enough failing to make the game make people confused, not know what's going on. And it, I, I felt that way through the entire game. I'm sitting there going, oh no, I, I think you're bad, but you've been playing good this entire time. But maybe that you only had this or I, I don't know like I've done it's kind of like resistance in that nature where I feel more I'm feeling nervous we're not so much in like a dead of winter feel I don't feel as nervous about who's the bad guy and whatnot because it's so up up in the air this one has that feeling and you do see when players are doing bad things or saying things that are strange but they have their reasons to do it and even I would understand in certain aspects sometimes when you draw a card from the deck as a captain you might get a sabotage or something like that and bad stuff can happen that way and the sabotage cards are brutal this game is extremely brutal it is very hard for the good guys to win but I think that's kind of the point really if you like the movie if you like the theme if you like trader games this is definitely gonna be one for you the artwork is cool in the game it works for me I really enjoy all the aspects as far as that is concerned I enjoy the flow of the game I enjoy the player boards all the component quality is excellent the insert box is nice as well it doesn't have anything in the back of the box which I think is kind of interesting because it doesn't show the game and all that and I think it's bad for marketing specifically it doesn't matter to me because I already own the game and I already know what the game was gonna be about before I went and asked to uh, try a review copy out. However, it might be something that you can consider. Um, also, I would note too that all the supply cards feel like they're part of the game. Like those are things that you would actually find in the movie, which is super cool. Overall though, this game is excellent. The one negative I will say that's actually real negative is the fact that imitations don't turn other people into imitations, which I think would be super cool, really themey, but it doesn't do that. It just kind of happens randomly by, draw by taking this blood sample deck, shuffling it and dealing them out to people and they might turn, they might not, and you might be playing as a good guy throughout the entire game uh, until the last one third of the game where you become a bad guy. It does make sense where you hide into a room or whatever and then something bad happens to you and maybe it was a different thing that got you, but I thought it would've been cooler if the thing were to somehow infect other players. The, pl the player thing would do that as well. But I think the AI things make more sense and it kind of works like that. Overall, that's kind of a nit and overall, that's kind of a nitpicky thing anyway, but I figured I'd mention it because it was kind of wonky to me. But I don't really know how they would do a better job, so there you go. All right, guys. Well, I love this game. This is staying in my collection. I will be playing this many, many more times to come. I love trader-based games. This one specifically is definitely in my top five, if not higher. Uh, I would definitely recommend you checking out if you like the theme and you like trader-based games. All right, yeah, stamp of approval. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go and check out the rest of our videos on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help, and we greatly appreciate it, as well as checking out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And check out The Thing. This game is so good. I, I love this game. So much fun. 
And uh, check out my friends, everythingboardgames.com, The Giveaway Geek, and uh, Ferdinand, the cardboard stacker. He does tons of tutorials and other great videos. All right, well, well, what do we do now? I guess we'll just wait and see. What? Yeah, I'm wearing a Hawaiian shirt in winter. I'm fine. It's not me. I'm, I, I'm fine now, okay? I'm fine. Yeah, I'm just not that cold, okay? I'm hot-blooded, all right?